Good afternoon and welcome to everyone joining us for part three of our self-drive series. My name is Feynant and I'm a learning specialist with Where To. I will be taking you through today's session. Behind the scenes is Kate, who will be on hand to answer any questions you might have. To keep track of all of the questions, we have muted everyone. However, please feel free to make use of the Q&A or the chat functions at the bottom of your screen if you have any questions you would like to ask us. This month, self-drives are front and center. In part one of the series, we were looking at how we can create self-drives in the root builder itself. In part two, we looked at how self-drive routes work with clients that are integrated with Way2. Today, part three, we will be looking at how Way2 works with clients who are exploring in a camper van, mobile home, or an RV. And then in the fourth and final part of the series, we will be covering the directions that your clients need to get from point A to point B. We will also be looking at how we can generate, edit, and get directions in different languages. So like I said, today's whole purpose is to introduce you to motorhomes um, and how to build those self-drive routes. So for this, we're going to be accessing our itinerary builder, and you would be able to build it as a simple personal or sample itinerary, depending on whether you want to send it out for proposals or want to send it for a direct client or an agent. And to add the actual motorhome route, we're going to go to step number two, the accommodation. Now, this is going to start off in exactly the same manner that you would regularly add any form of accommodation or any form of mobile accommodation like cruises or mobile safaris. So we'll go ahead and click on the accommodation button. And we're going to put in the name of the supplier for your mobile home. So this is very important um, because this is fairly new functionality, one that is not used all that often. A lot of times you're going to find that the supplier might not necessarily be in where to, in which case you will need to request us to add it for you. So to do that, you simply contact our content team. So that will be content at wayto.com and they will be more than happy to load it for you. So in this example, we're going with cruising berth high top camper van. We're going to select it from the drop down, and we have now added the supplier. Now, the most important part of when working with a motorhome is that we build in our stops in advance, because this is going to be the main component of the route that you are creating. And to do that, we're going to end or add all of those overnight locations that we're looking to book on this tour. So I've got a couple over here that I've pre-selected. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste those in so that you can see what it could potentially look like. And as you see, as you start typing in, or in this case, copy and pasting, you will be able to select the appropriate one from the drop-down menu. Again, if the campsite or the caravan park is not listed in where to, you are more than welcome to reach out to us to add that information for you. Excellent. Once you've added in all your stops, you would then be able to see that you will have a destination selection. So here you can select the destination and this particular setting will determine the set of images and descriptions that is going to be used on all of the outputs where to generate. So that would be the digital version as well as the paper version. Next to this, we have the nights. So this is where we're going to indicate how many nights you're spending at each one of these stops. And you can indicate that or decrease it or as necessary. Now that we've built the main routing, what you can do is if we go over to step number three, the route builder now, you're going to see that generally we have the route incorporated and we are showing it as a private vehicle. Now, to be more in line with the whole mobile recreational vehicle, we're going to click on the icons and you can change it to say RV. And you will just see that every time you click on it, the icon is going to update on the map 
and show appropriately. And you see if we zoom in now, we have a little RV icon. You can always go ahead and click on these icons, which will allow you to customize the routing if necessary, um, depending on the requirements that you do have. So the main routing for your camper vans or mobile homes is built within the accommodation step. So step number two. So that's when we added in all of the stops. Um, whereas if we navigate to step number three, the root builder, this is where we can add in any additional stops that you might have along the way or that you want to incorporate. Now, if we do go back to the accommodation step where we were working with the overnight stops, you'll notice that there is a toggle option that's the little moon icon or a little sun icon. So this will allow you to either, in our example, use overnight stops, so where the clients will sleep, um, or you could potentially change it to be day stops. So if you want them to stop along the way um, at certain sites or attractions, then this is how you can incorporate that into the main routing component if you want to have it available. Or if that's a bit of an issue, then you can always navigate to step number four, the planner, and you can work on creating day routes. So you'll see once you start adding all the activities, you can simply click on the day route function and build in the route between the sites and attractions on a single particular day. Okay. The very last thing that I want to show you in today's um, training is what the stops are going to look like on a digital output. So we've built in our stops, we are sending it to a client. So what do they see? If we navigate over to step number six, additional details, we're going to scroll down to preview itinerary and we're just going to view the digital output. We're going to enter. And what we can see on the overview right over here, we are clearly indicating each individual stop where the clients will be overnighting. Um, in this example, we're simply showing day one, day two, day three, but that is because we haven't incorporated any specific travel dates into the itinerary. But if we do put in a start and end date, then this is going to reflect the dates that they are checking into the stop that you have created. If you do have questions, like I said, Kate is in the background to answer any of those. Um, and if you don't have any questions right now, that is also fine. You can always contact us afterwards. So you can either email learning at where2.com or you can contact our support team, which is support at where2.com. And we will be more than happy to assist you with that. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us today and for joining part three of our very first small group training series. We really hope to see you join us in others and get more involved in the process. And if you do have any exciting topics that you feel you needs to be covered, please let us know. We are more than happy to look at that and incorporate it into future trainings. Thank you again and hope you have a super day and test out what we have just shown you.